Hey, what's going on guys? It's Sean here and welcome back to another rebuild where today we're going to be doing the Miami Dolphins and I actually just rebuilt the Dolphins uh, in one of those rebuild battle type things with two of my friends and I think I won a Super Bowl in three seasons. So we're going to see if I can replicate that success here today. Uh, by the way, if you guys are new around here and do enjoy my content, definitely hit that subscribe button. Definitely got some big things planned for Madden 19, so you're going to want to stick around and hit that like button if you guys do enjoy. So, on to a roster overview. This team is pretty uh, pretty much trash, to be totally honest with you. Uh, there is a lot of guys that are not going to be here uh, in a very short amount of time. So, Ryan Tannehill being one of those players actually already on the trade block. 29 years old, 84 overall, normal dev. He is not going to get any better. He's really only going to get worse. And his career thus far uh, has not been great. I think he's torn his ACL like twice now. So um, definitely trying to ship him out. Uh, we got old man Frank Gore currently at a running back, but we're going to be starting Kenyon Drake. So Frank Gore is going to be gone for sure. Uh, receiver, I, you know, the Danny Amendola signing was a little bit head scratching. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me personally. Uh, so he's going to be gone. Kenny Stills, though, is still pretty young at 25, and he's got a little bit of potential to grow. Uh, Devontae Parker is 24, 83 overall with quick dev, so he's going to be around for quite some time. Um, also, rookie down here, Mike Gusecki, is going to be playing receiver for this year. Uh, we're going to have him starting in the slot, actually, just to try to maximize his targets. Um, does have superstar dev as well. So we did sign the Darius Green for one year to actually play the real position of tight end since uh, these guys are pretty buns and you kind of just need to got to fill that spot for one year anyway. Uh, onto the offensive line, we do have Laramie Tunsil. He'll, ooh, he only has normal dev. He has 23 though, uh, 83 overall. We'll see what happens with him. We're going to have to definitely pump some uh, offensive line training. Josh Sitton is 31. 86 with Superstar, but he's on the uh, chopping block as well. Daniel Kilgore is nothing special. Isaac Asiata could potentially develop into like an 80-something. We'll see. Uh, and then Jawan James is also on the trade block. So on to the defense. Cameron Wake has been so good for many years for the Dolphins, but he's 35, and he is going to be, uh, he's going to be gone very shortly. William Hayes, another one of those guys that's old, going to be gone shortly. I did sign Robert Ayers for a year just to take up one of the defensive end spots because Robert Quinn, who came over in a trade with the Rams, I think it was the trade for Ndamukong Sue, unless they cut him. I don't I don't remember if they cut him or traded him to the Rams, but Robert Quinn is here in Miami, and he is also on the trade block uh, in favor of Charles Harris. We're going to start him. I did sign Jonathan Hankins. You guys know I love signing him. Akeem Spence... Uh, some of these other guys are on the trade block. Devon, I don't know how to say this guy's name. Uh, I really want to say it's like Godchow or something. Gachow, almost like Lightning McQueen says. Um, he's he's pretty good, actually, for a rookie. He is pretty solid. We're going to see if we can develop him at all. Wait, does that guy have braces? This man's got braces. <laughs> well, hopefully use some of that uh, rookie contract money to fix his teeth quicker than braces, but... Uh, onto the linebackers, we do have 2018 um, draftee Jerome Baker at a 76 overall, 21 years old. He should be pretty good. Um, I was really developing, or not developing, uh, debating giving him quick dev or not, but we're going to elect to not. So we'll see how he develops there with normal dev. Uh, I did sign Navarro Bowman. He's actually going to be playing right outside linebacker because Raekwon McMillan, the youngin, 20 years old, which... I looked him up. He's actually pretty inaccurate because he's now like 22. So I don't know when his birthday is, but he didn't age 20 or two years in one year. But whatever. For the sake of Madden, I would definitely take uh, being 20 years old. Uh, he, of course, was a 2017 draftee, so he's got normal dev as well. But we all know how middle linebackers win awards in Madden. Kiko Alonso is also on the trade block. Probably won't get anything for him, though. Secondary is pretty young and not great overall. Cordray Tankersley is a nice little piece there. We'll see if he develops at all. And Xavier Howard, same kind of deal with him. Uh, we do, of course, have Micah Fitzpatrick, the free safety out of Alabama. He does have superstar dev as well. And his overall is a little bit low. I don't know why he's only a 74, especially when a lot of these other rookies on this roster are a lot higher 
rated already out of the gate. It might just be a scheme thing. Um, but, I mean, he does have superstars, so he will develop pretty quickly anyway. And then at strong safety, we do have longtime Dolphin Rashad Jones. And this is another guy that's going to be gone, and it is pretty sad to say because he has been such a stalwart on the Dolphins' defense for so many years. Uh, and he is really good. He's been really underrated his entire career, but he's just so old now and not going to be getting any better. So he's going to be gone as well. So with that, let's get into some trades here. We do have uh, quite a few offers here already for Ryan Tannehill and some others. Uh, Jets offering us their first round pick, but I don't really want to trade him within the division. Um, and you know what? He's pretty trash. We'll send him to the Jets anyway. He's not going to be great for him. Uh, Danny Amendola, let's see what I can get for you. A bunch of second round picks. Any first, I would not expect there to be any first, but we're going to see. And it's looking like that's going to be a no. So we can send him to the Titans, I suppose. Seems like he would kind of fit in there. Uh, we got Rashad Jones here. Okay, what are we going to get for you? A bunch of third rounders this year, some second rounders next year. Uh, first rounder from the Cardinals. I will take that. And we've got some more here. I think we got like three, two more. Josh Sitton. What can we get? Some second rounders next year. Third rounders. All right. Well, let's send them to the Panthers. Let's uh, help out their offensive line a little bit. And our final trade offer in week two. We got William Hayes here. And the Panthers want to send us our first rounder. You see, and the Chiefs. What the heck? This guy is in the Dolphins and the Bills. All right. Wait, I just said the Dolphins. <laughs> the Denver Broncos. We're going to take the Broncos pick. Uh, mostly because in the last rebuild that I did, they went like 0 16 in the second year. So we're going to see if they can repeat that. So we've got even more trade offers here. Bobby McCain uh, from the Jets. We're going to take that. We're really just taking anything we can get for a lot of these guys because they're just garbage, man. Like, this team is so, so bad that we just need as many picks as we can possibly get. So we're going to send Jawan James to the Bengals. Um, uh, Cameron Wake here. See what we can get for him. Any firsts? I would highly doubt it. No firsts. Uh, we do have some seconds, though. For now. You know what? Let's take a third from this year, actually, if we can find one that we like. There's only, okay, there's only two, Seattle and Carolina. I've already traded so much with Carolina. I don't really want to do that anymore. So, you know what? Let's just take the second runner next year from San Francisco. That should be a pretty high pick, I would imagine. And one more uh, trade offer here for Robert Quinn. Okay, so we can get a third this year from a few teams. And let's take this one from the Texans. So after all that, uh, I don't know if we're going to have any more offers. Uh, if we do, I'll let you guys know. But uh, we're probably going to be moving on to the regular season. So we do have some more offers on one more player here, Jordan Phillips. And we're going to send him to the Broncos for this third round pick this year. And that's going to be the last trade that we're going to make. All right, guys, so this is the team in year number one. We're going to be starting Bryce Petty at quarterback, which is kind of odd. Did not expect Bryce Petty to be the starter of the Dolphins. But, you know, that's how it's going to go because we really just don't want to start Brock Osweiler. Uh, we got Kenyon Drake starting at running back, Mike Gesicki in the slot. Um, the offensive line is really in shambles, but we do have a linebacking core of Navarro Bowman, Raekwon McMillan, and Jerome Baker. Mika Fitzpatrick is starting at free safety, and his name is spelled wrong. <laughs> it's missing a C. That's funny. Um, we got Cordray Tankersley starting at uh, corner. He's going to be the cornerback two on our team. And that's pretty much it. This team is not going to succeed at all, actually. So I'll see you guys at the end of the season where we're probably going to win maybe like three games. All right, guys, so we're here at the end of season one, and of course we missed the playoffs, and my preseason prediction was exactly spot on. We won three games, so we went 3-13, and 13. and I actually don't know what kind of draft pick that's going to leave us with, if that's good enough for the first pick or not, and it should be, but it's not. Um, we are going to have the number two pick behind the 49ers, which is perfectly fine because there's really nobody at the very top of the draft that I really want. 
So let's take a look at stats. Bryce Petty had almost 4,000 yards, 28 touchdowns, and 18 picks. Actually, that's really not a bad season for Bryce Petty. <laughs> that's actually really good for a guy of his caliber. Um, the running game was extremely weak. Kenyon Drake did not have a good year. 700 yards, 5 touchdowns, 5 fumbles. Uh, as for receiving, uh, that is not good either. Devontae Parker had almost 1,000 yards and 5 touchdowns, but Kenny Stills led the team in catches with 79 790 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Mike Gusecki really actually better than I expected with how bad our team performed. i um, not going to complain about that. The offensive line was better than I thought it would be. Honestly, I thought uh, Tunsil would let up like 35 sacks, but he only let up 18, which still isn't good, but it's better than I thought. Uh, under the defense, though, Raekwon McMillan leading our team in tackles with 142 with two and a half sacks. That might be good enough for offensive or defensive rookie of the year. Uh, I don't know. So sacks were led by Robert Ayers and Charles Harris. Each had nine picks led by Cordray Tankersley with three. That uh, that could be pretty good. He also had two sacks. That's, uh, that's a pretty good stat line for a uh, rookie corner. Jerome Baker did have two picks and three and a half sacks as well. So hopefully he'll have a decent amount of XP. Didn't have any defensive touchdowns. Uh, kicking with Jason Sanders was actually pretty decent. Uh, punting was pretty decent as well with our couple of rookies on the special teams unit. Uh, no kick return touchdowns, but we did have a punt return touchdown with Jakeem Grant. So our offense was 30th in the league. That's pretty garbage. And uh, defense was 31st. So yeah, our team was total trash. Uh, of course, Matt Ryan of the 15-1 and Falcons is going to win MVP. Yeah, we're not even going to have anybody up there. Uh, offense player of the year, though, goes to Tom Brady. Uh, we didn't have anybody in the top 10. Defense player of the year to Khalil Mack, and we don't have anybody in the top 10, no surprise. Offensive rookie to Deshaun Watson. And nobody in the top 10, again, not a surprise. Miles Garrett does steal defensive rookie of the year from Ra Raekwon McMillan. That is unfortunate. To say the least, uh, Cordray Tankersley does come in ninth, and Jerome Baker in fifth. So our rookies did put on a pretty good showing, though. Best QB, uh, there's no way. Yeah, <laughs> Bryce Petty is not up there. Best running back, there's no way. Best receiver, again, no way. Best offensive line, zero chance. Best defensive line, maybe. No, not really surprised, though, honestly. Best linebacker, Tavon Miller. And we don't have anybody up there. I will say I've been debating about making like a wish list for Madden 19 franchise mode because there is some information out there from like the game changers and everything, but it's very limited because they didn't, they, you know, they didn't have forever to record footage out there. So uh, we still don't know a ton of, you know, all the little kinks that are going to be in franchise mode for 19. Um, but one thing that I really would like is, and I think that they do have at least some kind of designation, uh, just a difference between inside linebacker, outside linebacker, like a 4-3, and, you know, pass rushing linebacker. Because Von Miller winning best linebacker with Lawrence Timmons, who's like an inside backer at two, it, they're not the same type of player. It just doesn't make sense. So I think 19 is going to address that a little bit. We're going to see how that actually plays out. Uh, but we didn't have anybody else uh, winning awards. So we do have some XP here to spend. And uh, hopefully it'll be a decent amount. Devontae Parker with 41,000, which is nice. But uh, the rest of the offense is pretty dreadful. Uh, defense is not looking too good either outside of Fitzpatrick. So let's move on to the offseason, though. And hopefully we can turn this team around <laughs> at least a little bit. So we're here in the offseason now, and I kind of wasn't expecting this to be accepted right away, but we're going to be sending a fifth and a sixth round pick to the Falcons, as well as a running back named Kalen Ballage or Balage for Tevin Coleman. And I think this is definitely a much needed upgrade considering our running game situation last year. But let me go ahead and advance the week real quick, and we'll see if we sign these two guys. And we do. So... Demarcus Lawrence was actually a free agent for once. I don't think I've ever seen that before uh, with this roster. And this guy's a 96 overall, and that's going to provide some much-needed uh, pass rushing help for us, I think. So 
I'm thinking that was definitely a good signing for us. He also does have quick dev. Uh, we also get Isaiah Wynn, who, again, has superstar dev. So that is always, always nice to find on an offensive lineman. So uh, those are the only moves they're going to be making in the offseason now. Uh, so we're going to move on to the draft and see what we can do. All right, guys, so we're here after the draft, and I did trade back with the Ravens to uh, pick up another second-round pick for this year, which was this one right here, as well as their first next year. So with the number five pick in the draft, we took wide receiver Colin Johnson out of Texas. And can I press A? Thank you. This guy is an absolute monster, boys. This guy is 6'6", 97 speed, quick dev. 83 overall. He was the number one player in the draft. This guy is going to be so sick if I can just find somebody to throw him the ball because I don't have a quarterback. Uh, <laughs> moving on to the second round, though, the pick that we took with the Ravens second rounder, Jabril King. Uh, strong safety. Actually looks pretty good. Just the play rec and the awareness are very low. Um, but he's definitely got, like, he's got good speed, good zone coverage, decent tackling already. So I think he can definitely develop, hopefully, if he plays well. Uh, with our second round pick, we took right tackle Darian Woody, 81 overall. This guy, again, is pretty good. Um, I think he was like the number three or something like that player in the draft. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but he's actually really good. His awareness is just a 50, which kind of blows. Uh, third round, we took a left guard, uh, another pretty good player. I, somebody explain this confidence thing to me because I have no idea what that means. Um but he's a good player as well. Uh, third, Another third-round pick, we took a quick dev cornerback who's got 88 man coverage, 95 speed. So this guy should be getting pretty good. We just got to develop him, and maybe he can be our number one corner in like a year or so. Uh, another third-rounder here, we took a middle linebacker. He looked pretty decent, but he's really not. He's really not great at all, actually. Uh, so that's kind of a rip. Um Fourth rounder, we took a left tackle, who, again, is a pretty decent player. His uh, pass block's a little bit low, so if we can develop him, though, um, that can definitely work out. I'm actually going to develop uh, O-line and receiver this year since I don't have a quarterback yet, so this is actually working out a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, fifth round, we took another corner. Um, 70 overall, normal dev. Don't let the overall really fool you, though. 92 speed, 85 man coverage. This guy has the potential to be good. Play rec is a 51, so really that and awareness are where he's really getting screwed with the overall. Uh, zone coverage a little bit low to 72, but we can easily get that up. Um, and here I started kind of taking some flyers. Uh, I didn't really have anybody left on my draft board. Uh, Claudus and Norman, Norman though, uh, receiver at 95 speed, and I was wondering what his kick return is. 79, so it's not terrible. Uh, we'll see if he can find a role on our team. Uh, we took another linebacker here. <clears throat> here looked like a combine warrior, and he kind of was. He's got good agility and acceleration for a linebacker, but his speed's pretty low. Uh, really not a good player. Then we took a couple flyers on quarterbacks, and both of them suck. So that's the draft. We're moving on to season two. I just dropped my controller. All right, guys, so we're here at the start of season number two now, and this is what the team is going to be looking like for this year. So we got Bryce Petty still starting at quarterback. Of course, we've got offseason addition Tevin Coleman at running back. Uh, Kenyon Drake's going to be his backup now. We got Colin Johnson, our first-round draftee, in the slot at an 83 overall. This guy's going to be an absolute monster as long as Bryce Petty can get him the ball. Uh, we do have new addition Isaiah Wint to the offensive line. We uh, moved Laramie Tunzel over to right tackle to make room for him. Um, let's see. Mike Kosicki's up to an 88 now after last season. Uh, still got some XP to use on Kenny Stills. Devontae Parker up to an 86. This team, I think, is a lot better than last year. Raekwon McMillan up to an 80. Jerome Baker, 81. Mika Fitzpatrick, 85. Um, and I do actually want to start a rookie corner over everybody else so and actually i want demarcus lawrence to play right in because that's where he's going to get all the sacks but uh this is the team so hopefully we can win more than three games this year uh i have been making our goal seven games or seven wins just to keep it safe wait you're already playing left end bro what the heck okay all right well that's the team let's see uh see how we do all right, guys, so we're here at the end of season number two, and we go 6-10, and ten, actually. Uh, 
doubled our win total from last year, finished second in the division. So let's take a look at stats. We were 18th in the NFL in offensive yards and 14th in defense. So much better all around, it seems. Bryce Petty is actually playing extremely well, which is super weird. Uh, 4,400 yards, 33 touchdowns, 14 picks for him, a higher completion percentage than last year as well. Um, Tevin Coleman, though, definitely a lot better year on the ground than Kenyon Drake had last year. Almost 1,100 yards and six touchdowns. Uh, As for receiving, Kenny Stills led the team in catches with 81, also at 800 yards and eight touchdowns. Devontae Parker, 75 catches for 1,000 yards, nine touchdowns. And the rookie, Colin Johnson, only 66 catches, but he had 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns. So definitely a good year for him. Maybe good enough for rookie of the year. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, offensive line was actually much, much better than last year. Well, actually, I forgot. Last year was actually better than year ones typically are. So uh, maybe not much better, but definitely better, I would say. Um, defense, though, led by Raekwon McMillan with 153 tackles, one sack, and a pick as well. Sacks. Demarcus Lawrence, man. Told you guys that was going to be a good signing for us. 16 and a half sacks. And picks are going to be led by Reginald Rich, who is some uh, random strong safety I picked up in free agency after the draft. He also had a defensive touchdown as well, or our only one on the year for the entire team. Kicking was about the same as last year. Punting, about the same as last year. Uh, we did have two kick returns for touchdowns with Jakeem Grant and Clonus and Norman, and no punt returns. So let's see if we won any awards. MVP goes to Devontae Freeman, Falcons with back-to-back MVP winners. Um, let's see. Offense play of the year to Le'Veon Bell. Uh, Bryce Petty actually comes in 10th with Ryan Tannehill in 9th. Uh, defense play of the year, Miles Jack gets it in. Uh, well, he comes in first on the Jags and 10-6 and six Jags. We don't have anybody top 10. Not really a surprise. We do not get rookie of the year, bro. What do you mean? I don't know who Brian McCutcheon is, but uh, Colin Johnson comes in second for Rookie of the Year. We also have Christian Nicholas, the like seventh-round quarterback in ninth, which is pretty funny. Uh, defense Rookie of the Year, we also miss out on, man. Come on, dude. Finished second with Jabril King, third with Brian Tanney, uh, four, or sixth with the uh, corner Cameron Norath. That guy's got actually weird last name. That was the first time I actually even tried to say it. But Bryce Petty comes in fifth for best quarterback. Um, Tevin Coleman is nowhere to be found for best running back, best receiver. Devontae Parker does come in tenth. Best O-line, we don't have anybody up there. Best D-line, we got Demarcus Lawrence in fifth. Best linebacker, we don't have anybody. Uh, Don't have anybody for best defensive back either. And Jason Sanders does come in ninth, though, for best kicker. So, moving on to the offseason now. This actually reminds me, I forgot to show who won the Super Bowl in year one, and I don't remember, so who knows? It's a mystery. Uh, but in year two, the Titans actually beat the Rams 31-24, to so that's another real interesting Super Bowl matchup. Uh, I think with this, this roster I've been using, the Super Bowl matchups are pretty different from, um, from like the Madden default roster. There was a lot of like the same you know, Eagles and Patriots or Eagles Chargers type matchups and that. So it's nice to see a little bit of variety in here. All right, guys. So the only two players that we're going to be acquiring in this offseason period is going to be Carlos Hyde to be our new backup to replace Kenyon Drake. And Navarro Bowman is just going to be coming back for another year. Uh, He will actually be a backup and you'll see why. I'll say that. All right, guys, so we are going to be, be making a couple of trades here before the draft, and we're going to be sending the box our 12th and 13th picks, as well as Xavier and Howard for number one. And I really, really need number one. So uh, don't you worry. I mean, it might not be seem like super realistic, but this these are two first-round picks and a pretty solid corner, and that was actually actually their number one need. And when I have all these picks, like, I have literally a boatload of picks. It makes no sense just to, you know, sit and take them where I already have them when I have a specific need for something. So I'm going to be making one more. I got to figure that out real quick. 
All right, so here is the other trade. I'm going to be trading with the 49ers. I'm going to get, going to get their number four overall for my number 10 overall, Albert Wilson, and one of my second round Oh my God, boys. What did I tell you? This draft was insane, brother. So with the number one pick, we took quarterback Jacob Eason out of Washington, recently transferred there from Georgia after Jake Fromm put on that show this past year. Um, 80 overall superstar dev. Uh, he wasn't even one of the guaranteed superstars either. He was just the top rated quarterback. And, I am extremely, extremely happy with that pick. So we finally got a quarterback to throw the ball. I mean, as nice as Bryce Petty has been, as surprising as he has performed, uh, he is not a franchise quarterback. So with the number two pick, we took Jalen Phillips, going to be playing right end for us out of UCLA. Uh, he was one of the guaranteed superstars. 83 overall, he was actually the number one player in the draft, which, I mean, when you take him at number two, that's uh, still pretty expected, I guess. Um with the number three pick, we take middle linebacker Patty Fisher, making his return to one of my rebuilds. Uh, the last time that I drafted him, I think he never really developed into anything. But now, being one of the guaranteed superstars, uh, maybe he will actually become a pro bowler or something. Something of that caliber. So, another very good player. Um, zone coverage a little bit low, but we can definitely get that up. With the fourth pick, we took Curtis Weaver, uh, outside linebacker out of Boise State. And another one of the guaranteed superstars here. This guy is really good. He's really fast. Um, he, oh, man, his head power is in 91, too. This, uh, I think this was definitely needed, taking three guys like this. Uh, Jalen Phillips originally was actually an outside linebacker, but I think I just prefer him at defensive end with that 85 speed, 86 finesse move. I think he can definitely develop into a really, really good pass rusher. So we're going to stick him there. Um, since we are playing a 4-3, it does make a lot of sense as it is. So, moving on to the second round, we got receiver Henry Ruggs out of Alabama. This is another uh, real-life prospect type of guy. Uh, really fast, 97 speed, 78 overall. I think we might look to get rid of Kenny Stills and start this guy in the slot. Get him a few extra reps, see if we can develop him. Um, so, moving on to the rest of the draft, we had a ton of picks. Like I said, so we took this left guard here. Uh, definitely a good player to develop. We took a cornerback here, which this guy had a really high com combine grade. And he's really not too bad. 82 zone, 77 man. Or actually, is this the guy I'm thinking of? I that might not be the guy that I'm thinking of. It might have been this guy. Yeah, this was the guy with the really high com combine grade. So his stats aren't really anything special. Uh, we did take actually another outside linebacker here with quick dev. And I might... No, nah, I'm just going to leave him at outside linebacker. So he might actually start, though. Um, so we drafted a couple of corners. Martinez Morris is actually pretty nice. He's fast. He's got good zone. Decent man already. So he's probably going to start. Um, decent backup free safety here. We did draft another superstar here. He was playing defensive end, but we're going to move him to D-tackle because he's 300 pounds. And he has, he does already have 89 power move, which is nice. Um, another left guard here. Oh, this was the other guy with superstars. So that's four, that's six superstars in this draft. And we got a few guys with quick. Uh, this guy's got quick here too. This draft was crazy. Uh, this corner right here is just another guy with really high combine grade. He's really nothing special, but he's better than the other guy actually. So maybe he can develop. But... Absolutely insane draft. I think this might actually take the cake as my best draft ever. Um, even though, I mean, all, well, three of these guys were guaranteed superstars and I already knew they were going to be good. Still, just having six superstars in a draft is absolutely insane. So moving on to season three. And by this time, after this draft, I'm thinking a playoff run is not out of the question. All right, we do have some trade offers here for Kenny Stills, and uh, let's see. Let's send him to. Where was I getting? Okay, let's uh, let's send him to the Titans. Let's just send all my receivers that I don't want to the Titans. That's fine. 
All right, guys, this is going to be the team for season number three. Of course, we got new addition Jacob Eason playing quarterback. We got Henry Ruggs in the slot at receiver. Isaiah wins up to a 94 overall. We got uh, a couple new offensive linemen here and there. What's this guy's name? Darian? Yeah, Darian Woody, right tackle, up to an 87. Mike Kosicki at a 90. I think he was an 88 last year. So he went up. Uh, Colin Johnson up to an 88. Devontae Parker at a 90. Tevin Coleman still at a 90. Um, and we do have Carlos Hyde as well backing him up. Defense is going to look like this. We got Curtis Weaver starting at right outside linebacker. Patty Fisher in the middle with Raekwon McMillan as the backup. And Jerome Baker starting at left outside linebacker still with, uh, what's this guy's first name? Griffin Wood with Quick Dev uh, as his backup. Um, secondary is mostly the same. Still got Micah Fitzpatrick up to a 91. Uh, Jabril King up to a 77. Cordray Tankersley at an 80. Sorry, I said 80 weird. I was expecting there to be another number after that, but he's an 80. Uh, Cameron Nawrath at an 85 now. Martinez Morris at a 75 still, uh, one of the rookies. We got uh, Jonathan Hankins up to an 87. Jalen Phillips, 83 at right end. We got Demarcus Lawrence still a 96 at left end. So I'm thinking we might make the playoffs this year, uh, but we'll see. If anything... I don't know if Tom Brady is still in the league or not, so we might make a wild card, but it looks like we're pretty consistently putting up points uh, so far in the preseason. So maybe if the defense can step up and be a little bit better than they have been in the past, then uh, playoffs are not out of the question. No. <laughs> what do you mean, brother? Oh, we just, just barely missed out on the playoffs there. All we had to do is just win that game against the Jets, and we would have made it. But unfortunately, we miss it going 7-8-1. and one. Um, Actually, our highest win total so far, though. Our offense was third in the league, and our defense was 24th. Yeah, I figured our defense would be a little rough. Jacob Eason, five yards off of 5,000 in his rookie year. 44 touchdowns, 20 picks, pretty good completion percentage as well. Uh, Tevin Coleman, pretty good year, almost 1,100 yards, nine touchdowns. Receiving, led by my man Colin Johnson, 110 catches, 1,200 yards, seven touchdowns. Devontae Parker, though, 83 catches, almost 1,200 yards, 13 touchdowns. Mike Gusecki, actually uh, third on our team. Well, tied for third with Henry Ruggs, who had almost 1,000 yards and seven touchdowns as well. Uh, blocking much, much better. That is that's pretty good. That's pretty good for Madden. Um, so defense is going to be led by Patty Fisher, 137 tackles, three sacks, and a pick. Maybe rookie of the year. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence led with sacks with 13 and a half. Jalen Phillips, eight and a half. Jonathan Hankins, seven and a half, too. Picks led by Mika Fitzpatrick with five. Jerome Baker and Cameron Norath had three each. If you guys had two, if you guys had one. Any touchdowns this year? Reginald Rich, again, with our only touchdown on defense. So as for kicking, Jason Sanders, actually a pretty good year. The best that he's had. Uh, punting is pretty decent, I suppose. No kick return touchdowns, but we do have two punt return touchdowns with Henry Ruggs. So let's see if we get any awards. MVP, we miss out on. We come in third place behind Ben Roethlisberger and Tyrod Taylor. LOL. Um, let's see here. So offensive player of the year, we got Jacob Eason in fourth. Uh, defensive player of the year, we don't actually have anybody, but we do get offensive rookie with Jacob Eason. Henry Ruggs finishes second, so that's a pretty good one-two combo right there. Defensive rookie goes to Patty Fisher, Curtis Weaver in second, Jalen Phillips in third, Martinez Morris in fourth. We got rookies all over the place. Jacob Eason in second for best quarterback. Uh, best running back, we got Tevin Coleman in seventh. Best receiver, we got Devontae Parker in second, and that's it, actually. No Colin Johnson up there, which is pretty surprising. Isaiah Wynn in 8th for best offensive line. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence in 8th for best defensive line. Best linebacker, we got Patty Fisher in 10th. That's it. Wow. Uh, nobody for best D-back. And Jason Sanders does come in ninth for best kicker. So we've got some XP here to spend. And then we'll be moving on to next season. Unfortunate that we missed the playoffs, but uh, this was really a building year to get all of our rookies, um, you know, get their feet wet in the league. Next year, though, fully expecting playoffs, pretty much playoffs or bust. 
and uh, it is going to be year four, so it's kind of getting down to crunch time again. So we'll see what uh, what we can do in the off season to improve our chances. So the Eagles are going to win the Super Bowl in year three, 31 to 14, over the Raiders. So here in the off season now, the only moves we're really going to be making before the draft, uh, we're going to be signing Jordan Howard, even though we really don't need him. But it's going to give us a really nice two-headed running back attack with Howard and Tevin Coleman. Uh, oh, he's got like 30,000 XP saved up too. Okay. Uh, we're also going to sign Calvin Ridley to a one-year deal uh, just to get a nice fourth receiver. Um, we may end up drafting a receiver. I don't really know. i got to do a little bit more scouting. So Ridley might not be around for very long. Uh, but he's definitely a nice uh, fourth option for us. And then we're also going to sign Jalen Mills. Definitely need some secondary help. I do have a plan at strong safety that I'm going to address in the draft. But Jalen Mills is actually going to be our number one corner. Uh, well, not for long. Narath has some XP to use. But really need to address the secondary uh, in this draft and probably in the next draft as well. The corners really have not uh, developed too well. So that is something I'm going to focus on for sure. All right, guys, so we're here after the draft now, and this is what I was talking about when I said I had a plan at strong safety. So Francis Harper, 79 overall, took him at number five. Superstar Dev, he was one of the guaranteed superstars. Uh, zone coverage is a bit low, but uh, everything else is pretty good. So um, really just got to develop him a bit. Second round, we took this right guard right here with quick Dev. Uh, third round, a left guard. Pretty good, only normal dev, but he is a pretty good player. Um, then in the fourth round, it's going to get a little bit interesting. So I started uh, taking a run or making a run on corners. And this one right here, 77 overall, superstar dev, dude. So this guy, definitely going to be key for us, I think, in the coming seasons. Uh, the rest of these guys really aren't great. This guy's actually pretty solid. Um, low overall, though. This guy, not great. Um, got a left guard here that's pretty good, too. Uh, this corner, again, decent, I suppose. Uh, still low overall. Uh, we got a quick dev right tackle here. High run block. Very low awareness. Um, another pretty meh quarter, cornerback. Um, and then I took a couple of flyers here on a receiver and a free safety. So uh, that was the draft. I think it was decent. We definitely got a couple of positions that we really need, namely the safety in the corner and a couple of quick dev um, offensive linemen. So I think we're in a good spot and fully expecting playoffs next year after uh, using all this XP and uh, developing a little bit more. All right, guys, so this is what the team is going to be for season number four. We got Jacob Eason up to a 91, Jordan Howard 95 with Tevin Coleman as the backup running back at 91, Colin Johnson up to a 96, Henry Ruggs 83 in the slot, Devontae Parker 93 in the other outside spot. Uh, the offensive line is basically the same as the past couple of years, or at least last year. Um, let's see, defense, I think... Pretty much everybody's the same overall as you last saw. We did add Jalen Mills and Francis Harper. Um, so hopefully we can get some development out of some key rookies and make our way to the playoffs this year. I'm thinking I'm thinking around 10 wins is probably what we can expect from this team this year. But let's get on to it and let's see what we can do. All right, guys, so we're here at the end of season number four. And as you can see in the news stories, Jacob Eason does win the MVP award as we go 15 and one. Oh, my God. That is not even the uh... man. Come on. This isn't the screen that I want to click on. I want to click on the schedule so that you can see I did not cheat. So our only loss of the season was to the Chargers, a three point loss. Uh, we dominated all season, really. Just absolutely incredible season for the Dolphins. <laughs> I said at the beginning of the year, I expected around 10 wins, and we got 15 of them. So first in offense, and I think we're first in defense. I think that's what that means. I'm pretty sure it is, actually. So this team is, yeah, we are first in defense. Man, <laughs> This team is incredible, guys. Jacob Eason, 4,800 yards, 46 touchdowns, 11 picks, 72% completion percentage. 
<sighs> Alright. That feels so good. It's like I found Dan Marino again for the Dolphins. Uh, the new Aaron Rodgers. The new Tom Brady. Whoever. Whoever you want to call him. He's Jacob Eason. He is a stud. Jordan Howard, almost 1,500 yards, 10 touchdowns. Tevin Coleman, 15 touchdowns as the backup running back. I would say that two-headed running back attack really, really panned out well. Receiving. Wow. Okay, so the ball was spread around a lot, apparently. Colin Johnson, though, leads the team in everything. 103 catches, almost 1,300 yards, 14 touchdowns. Devontae Parker, 97 catches for 900 yards and 7 touchdowns. Henry Ruggs, 74 catches, almost 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Um, offensive line led up, what is that, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 sacks all year. That is incredible. Defense led by Patty Fisher, 129 tackles, 2 sacks, 4 picks. Sacks are going to be led by Demarcus Lawrence with 13. Jalen Phillips with 12.5. Curtis Weaver with 7. Uh, Patty Fisher does lead the team in picks as well with that four number. Cameron Norrath, three picks. Francis Harper, the rookie. Daniel Mullins, the other rookie, each had two. A couple other guys had two each. Uh, We did have, looks like, two defensive touchdowns. Francis Harper and Jerome Baker each had one. It's on to kicking with Jason Sanders. Pretty decent year again. Uh, Punting, uh, about the same as it has been, I guess. I think the average yards per punt are actually up. I don't really know if that's good. I, I guess that's good. Uh, no kick return or punt return touchdowns this season. So let's take a look at awards. We already know we got MVP. And do we have anybody else in the top 10? We do not. So Jacob Eason there at the top. Nick Saban proving that he does belong in the NFL with the Dolphins. Wins coach of the year going 15-1. and one. <sighs> This is the kind of shit I'm talking about, Madden. Why does Jacob Eason not win offensive player of the year? I will never understand. Uh, Leonard Fournette does win that, though. Jordan Howard in fifth for that. Uh, Defense player of the year goes to Patty Fisher. Nice to see. Uh, Curtis Weaver in tenth as well. Offensive rookie. I don't think we had impact offensive rookies as we usually do not by this point. Defensive rookie. Francis Harper comes in fourth. Uh, Daniel Mullins in seventh. Best QB, of course, Jacob Eason. Who else? It's funny, actually. This quarterback right here that the Ravens have, uh, that's who they traded up to get. Um, wait, when did I, when did I, uh, oh God, I don't remember what player I got with their pick now. Uh, Oh, well, I don't know. Well, I traded, I I traded down with the Ravens. I guess it must've been year one. It must've been year one because I had the number two overall pick. So who did I take in the first? Uh, You know what? Whatever. I'll figure it out. I'm sure I'll remember at some point. Uh, so, best running back, Leonard Fournette. We got uh, Jordan Howard in second. We got Tevin Coleman in ninth. Uh, best receiver, Colin Johnson in second. Best O-line. Isaiah Wynn does actually win it. Darian Woody in third. Tracy Trapp, the center, in fifth. Marion Meyer, Meyer, left guard in sixth. And Laramie Tunsil back up in ninth. And Corey Henson, the right guard, in tenth. Uh, we got Demarcus Lawrence in seventh for best D line, best linebacker. We got Patty Fisher in fourth, best defensive back. Uh, we don't actually have anybody. Best kicker though. Jason Sanders does come in eighth. So I'm sure I've got quite a bit of XP here to spend. Uh, yeah, Jacob Eason got fifty five thousand for that. Look at all these Pro Bowls, baby. Oh my God. Look, Henry Ruggs even that probably got a Pro Bowl. What about defense? Patty Fisher got all kinds of XP. Make a Fitzpatrick. Oh, my God, boys. Oh, let's get it. All right, guys. So here in the divisional round of the playoffs, before we get into anything, I do apologize if you hear anything in the background. Uh, There are guys on my roof right now painting the house, I think, Um, which I did not know was going to happen today. But... So, in the division round, we are taking on the 8-7-1 Baltimore Ravens. Uh, this is what the team is looking like after using all the XP. Jacob Eason up to a 96 with confidence. Henry Ruggs, 91. Devontae Parker, 96. I mean, the offensive line is all high 90s. Uh, defense is looking incredible. Um, let me actually do that real quick and see what we're looking like. So, I mean, this team is phenomenal. And I think we need to uh, go cap off this 15-1 and season with a uh, Super Bowl victory. And we're already in 95, dude. This team is so good. 
All right, guys, we're coming up on halftime now, and we're currently up 35-13 to 13 now, just before the half, and they're going to score again, but so do we. So we're up 19 points, and it looks like we're just going to close it out, and oh, man, we're really piling it on. So we're going to win 55-30. to 30. Let's take a look at these stats. Uh, Jacob Easton, 282 yards, four touchdowns. Uh, Bruce Pachman. Uh, did throw a pick, so that might have cost us. Jordan Howard, bro. 205 yards and two touchdowns. That is sick. Um, the team looked like it did very, very well overall. Um, wow, hold on. Julian Edelman's still in the league. What the heck? Uh, did let up a couple of sacks here and there. Um, oh, actually, it was only one. We got three sacks on them, though, and Francis Harper did get the pick, so we're moving on to the championship round. So here in the championship round, we're taking on the 13-3 and Jacksonville Jaguars. And we are still 95. They're 96, though. Let's see what happens. Well, this has become just insane. <laughs> Our team is absolutely blowing out the Jaguars right now. 49-12. to Oh my god, dude. That is sick. That... <laughs> Jacob Eason, 342 yards and six touchdowns. Blake Bortles threw three picks. Uh, Jordan Howard didn't do as much as he did last game, that's for sure. Colin Johnson, seven catches, 167 yards and three touchdowns. That is insane. No sacks at all in the entire game, but Patty Fisher, Jalen Mills, and Curtis Weaver each picked off Blake Bortles. Man, we're going to the Super Bowl, baby. So here in the Super Bowl, guys, we're taking on the 11-5 New Orleans Saints. And they are also a 95 overall. So, you know what? We have absolutely destroyed the first two teams we played against in these playoffs. I'm not saying I expect the same, but I'm expecting a victory. All right, guys. So, we're coming up on halftime here, and we're currently up 24-10 to 10 as they scored just before the half. Uh, we kick a field goal to make a 27-10, and it's kind of going back and forth here. Nobody's really scoring, but they score a touchdown, but so do we. So we're still up 17, and the game is over. And just like that, Miami Dolphins are Super Bowl champions, baby. Ah, and it feels so good. Jacob Eason has officially done something that Dan Marino could never do, and that is win a Super Bowl. <laughs> Man, I'm throwing some massive shade at Dan. But uh, let's uh, take a look at who that MVP was. And the MVP was actually Colin Johnson. Really? Okay, well, let's take a look at his stats and see what he did. Uh, what the heck? Lamar Jackson's on the Saints now. And he threw three picks. So Jacob Eason, though, 280 yards, three touchdowns, one pick. Alvin Kamara definitely had a good game, but so did Jordan Howard. Uh, so, Colin Johnson, what? What do you mean? Colin Johnson didn't do anything. How is he the MVP? Um, oh, Josiah Jeffcoat. This guy's actually, uh, he was a guaranteed superstar last uh, last draft. I was very intrigued since he is 6'5", but apparently he went to the Saints. Uh, Devontae Parker, Henry Ruggs both had touchdowns, and so did Tevin Coleman, all right? Uh, so we let up one sack, and we got one sack. Jalen Phillips had the sack for us. Cameron Norath, Curtis Weaver, and Patty Fisher each had picks off of Lamar Jackson. And, man, let me tell you guys, is that two in a row now? Which one is this? This is okay. So Dolphins, I won one with the Raiders. I won one with the Bears. I won one with the 49ers. This is four in a row now. Four Super Bowl Super Bowl wins in a row, baby. Let's go. So this is the final team. Feel free to pause if you want to take a closer look. Jacob Easton, of course, was the star for us. 95 overall. The offensive line is absolutely sick. Uh, our receivers, Colin Johnson especially, but Devontae Parker and Henry Ruggs, super nice. Mike Gusecki as well. This extremely high-powered offense with that two-headed running back attack, Jordan Howard and Tevin Coleman. Uh, as for the defense, we got those linebackers here and Jalen Phillips, of course. The four picks in a row in the first round, man. But uh, Patty Fisher, Curtis Weaver, and Jalen Phillips, some stars on the defense uh, unexpected free agency signee, uh, Demarcus Lawrence, 99 overall. Jerome Baker up to a 90. Felix Harper, the new strong safety. Mika Fitzpatrick, of course, 96. Uh, the corners were actually not great. I'm kind of surprised we did as well as we did with uh, these corners. But Narath and Mullins, the uh, 
the guys we actually drafted turned out to be pretty good, especially Mullins with that superstar dev. Jalen Mills, definitely a good free agency signing. Uh, Jonathan Hankins, of course, from year one. And Torian? Torian Hale, that unexpected superstar in the in the mid-rounds a year ago. So that is the team, guys. And hope y'all did enjoy. If you did, hit that thumbs up button down below. And if you're new around here, hit that sub button, man. I got some big things planned for Madden 19. A whole lot of rebuilds coming out for you guys. So, like I said, hope you guys did enjoy. And with that, I'm out.